There are many legends regarding the case of the downed F-117 during the Operation Allied Force in 1999, but also many myths emerge regarding the stealth capability and the physics behind it. Even after 20 years, many of these myths and false claims are still spreading. Therefore, it is time to clear up some things in both areas. The episode uses as a base the previously released videos about the SA3 system and the explanation of the stealth technology and the radar equation. Therefore, these are not repeated here. It is strongly recommended that viewers unfamiliar with the content watch those previous videos. There are many misconceptions and misinformation circulating on the internet about the circumstances of the downing of the F-117. Even though is exactly known is the identity of the commander of the Neva Missa battery that achieved this success. Zoltan Dani, a Hungarian minority origin officer of the Serbian army, was the commander of the Missa battery. A conversation with him and other Serbian sources are the backbone of the video, besides many others. This video discusses the most common urban legends and misconceptions one by one. First inaccurate statement, the F-117 opened the weapons bay, which revealed the position of the plane, then it could be downed easily. This is one of the stupidest and yet most common delusions, because it ignores even common sense. The door to the weapon bay is open only for a few seconds. In such a short time, it is not even possible to lock the target, let alone for the missile to reach the target following a launch. A target does not remain trackable just because of a short time it was detected or locked on by a fire control radar. If the radar cross section becomes too small, the radar simply lost the target. Using an analogy, it is like a mirror in a black, non-reflective box. If the box is open and the light comes from the right direction, the mirror reflects the light. The mirror is well visible from the right direction, while less from the other directions. After closing the box, the reflective surface disappears, therefore a black box in dark is not visible anymore from great distances. Moreover, compared to the box analogy, an airplane is not stationary, it moves quite fast. After the plane broke the lock and the radar lost the track, guiding a missile became impossible. Guided missiles need continuous target tracking. Second inaccurate statement. The takeoff time of the 117 was known because the air bases were not isolated from the public. A quick phone to the Belgrad was enough to warn the air defense they knew the arrival time of the planes. Just because an airplane takes off in a certain place, it does not tell anything about its destination, the used route, the time to arrival or the possible direction of the target. Based on this vague information, it is not possible to time the engagement simply by turning on the radars. Third inaccurate statement. The F-117 used the same route as on previous nights. Then a Neva Missa battery deployed under the route. This location shortened the target distance, which made it possible to down the plane. This is also a very common misconception. The reality is the exact opposite. The third Missa battery of the 250 Brigade, led by Zoltan, left the peacetime deployment area one day before the first night of the Allied Force. The battery deployed to an old, spare SA-75 Dvinosem site, which was built in the 60s near Shimanovci. The location was selected just because it was available and not because somebody in the 60s had magic capabilities and forecasted the route of the F-117. None of the radars were turned on following the relocation, therefore it was not possible to detect the battery. The satellite reconnaissance didn't spot the missile battery either. Why? <laughs> it is an interesting question. Maybe the reserve all SAM sites were not checked, who knows. The US in the late 90s already had the A80 Joint Surveillance Target Attack Radar System planes, in short G-STARS. With its A and API-7 radar, it could operate in wide surveillance area mode, ground moving target indicator, fixed target indicator, target classification and synthetic aperture radar modes. However, it was designed to spot roughly battalion or regiment level troop movements. If it is necessary, it can make synthetic APR radar images about certain places of interest. Spotting a signal relocating SAM battery, which simply merged and hid into civilian traffic, was beyond the capability of the G-Star. 
if such an aircraft even patrolled the area when the same battery relocated. Fourth inaccurate statement. Zoltan Dani changed the frequency of the radar without the permission of his superior officers. Thanks to this, the detection range of the radar dramatically increased, which made it possible to detect the plane from farther away. Zoltan Dani stated that minor modifications were made on the P-18 radar, but he did not change anything on the SNR-125 fire control radar. However, even that would not matter, because the bottleneck was the fire control radar. Without the fire control radar, missile guidance is not possible. The purpose of the target acquisition radar is to provide sufficient time for the battery to prepare and provide the situational awareness during the engagements. Let's see what actually happened, beginning with the equipment of the missile battery. The success was achieved with an S-125M Neva, SA-3B Goa air defense system but with a different equipment from a standard battery. After the retirement of the S-70M Volkhov SAM system, dictated by the Dayton Peace Treaty, the Serbian air defense did not scrap the P-18 target acquisition radars belonging to them. Compared to the P-15 low-altitude target acquisition radar of the S-125M system, the P-18 is far more suitable for detecting targets flying above 6 km. This has been presented in the video about the NEVA system. In addition, the P-18 operates on a longer wavelength, it has meter wavelength and not decimeter. Thus, its detection range against a MiG-21 size fighter is 217 km instead of the P-15's approximately 140 km. Danny's missile battery had a P-18 target reconnaissance radar instead of the standard P-15. Another important factor was luck in several areas. At the beginning of the conflict, Belgrade was defended by the 215th Air Defense Brigade with 8 NAVA missile batteries. From the beginning of the operation, the huge force ratio gap between Serbian and Western coalition forces was evident. For this reason, the preservation of the air defense assets of Serbian army got the priority, rather than taking unacceptably high risk to shoot down only some planes. Before the outbreak of the conflict, every missile battery of the brigade was relocated. They left their peacetime locations and from 10-30 km from the city formed a defensive ring around Belgrade. The NATO airplanes were expected from the southwestern direction, from Bosnia. Only two or three missile batteries were on alert at a given night, the rest relocated or rested. Therefore, it was just a matter of luck that a NATO airplane flew into the engagement zone of a missile battery or not. If a NEVA battery was not on alert, it did not have permission to turn on their radars. The missile batteries used landline phones to communicate with brigade headquarters whenever possible. The Serbian Air Force had only a single MiG-29 squadron. The MiG-21 Beast fighters were so outdated that they were not considered usable, they did not perform even a single sortie. The sole MiG-29 squadron had 14 fighters, but only 10 were combat capable. Half of them were relocated to Ponikve, Nice and Podgorica airbases. Near Belgrade at Batajnica airbase only 5 MiGs remained. On the first night of the conflict, Serbians tried to stop the airstrike with MiG-29s without any success. The Serbian pilots flew 7 sorties, but the NATO F-15C and F-16AM fighters with MRAM missiles downed 5 MiGs. By incredibly luck, 4 of pilots survived the loss of their planes. After the first night, the further employment of fighter jets were discarded. Following that, SAMS alone got the task of defending the airspace. On the first night of Allied Force, strike NATO planes bombed more than one empty NAVA site. One of them was the Yakovo site, which Zoltan Dani's unit left behind just a day ago. There was not any crew or equipment loss, but the stored reserve missiles in the hardened shelters were destroyed. On the third night of the operation, three NEVA batteries won alert, the third at Shimanovci, the fifth at Progar and the seventh at Bozderevat SAM site. All of them were west of Belgrade. They expected the NATO planes from the west. The third day of the conflict started badly for the Serbian air defense. At 17.20 afternoon, the fifth missile battery was hit. There were no crew casualties, but it took a week to repair the missile battery. This was the first SAM loss of the conflict. 
For the evening airstrike, the F-117 stealth fighters took off from Aviano in Italy and flew over Slovenia's airspace. They were not escorted by the EA-6B Prowler electronic jamming planes and seed escort. They carried out aerial refueling above Hungary. After that, they flew southeast along the Romanian-Serbian border to Belgrade. The strike planes approached the city from the northeast where they were least expected. When it was obvious that the NATO strike planes were near Belgrade, bombs had been dropped, two naval units remaining on alert turned on their target acquisition radars. The radar operators didn't experience the usual electronic jamming this night, the targets were clearly visible on the indicator of the P-18 radar. After turning on the P-18 radar, Zoltan's Dennis battery detected two targets, one closer and one another at greater distance. The targets were leaving the airspace of Belgrade, they flew towards the safe airspace of Hungary. The battery concentrated on the closer target. According to Zoltan Dani, they didn't know at time that the F-117 had been detected, it was revealed only after the wreckage was found. After turning on the P-18, the nearest target was 23 km away with a beating of 195 degrees. It flew north towards Hungary, keeping the heading 341 degrees. At this moment was initiated the target search with the fire control radar, while the P-18 target acquisition radar continuously tracked the target. The first target search was performed with a beating of 210 degrees. The target did not appear on the screen of the fire control radar. The target distance was 17 km according to the P-18 radar. The second target search was performed at 230 degrees. It was unsuccessful again. The target distance was 15 km. Finally, on the third attempt, the target appeared on the fire control radar screen. The distance was 14 km, altitude 6 km, beating 240 degrees. Due to small size of the target, manual target tracking was performed by the crew. The three-point missile guidance method was selected. Two missiles were launched when the target beating was 245 degrees. The second missile malfunctioned, NEVA's missile tracking system could not track it. After 21 seconds of flight, approximately 14 km away from the battery, the first missile exploded at the target by the proximity fuse. By this time, the target altitude increased to 7 km, the target beating was 270 degrees. The wreckage of the F-117 crashed near the village of Budjanovci. The manual target tracking was not an easy and it had to be performed quickly because of the F-117 flew at 900 km per hour, which is 250 m per second. Shooting down on F-117 was an extraordinary feat. What was needed to achieve that? First, the missile battery had to be able to detect the target soon enough for a given distance with the P-18 radar. Based on the azimuth and distance provided, the P-18 could perform the quick search and look by the fire control radar. Only in this way was it possible to look on the target in the time to finish the kill chain. This covers the lock, the launch and the scoring a hit before it flew within the minimum engagement range or flew outside the detection distance. The P-18 radar was essential for this, but not every Serbian naval battery had it. Only 4 P-18s were available for the 8 NEVA batteries. It was pure luck that Dennis units had one of them. Only a skilled and motivated crew had the chance to be successful with the 40-year-old Soviet technology within the very short time window. Roughly only 90 seconds passed from the P-18 detection until the hit. The relocation to the right place was pure luck, nothing else. The SNR-125 fire control radar could detect the knighthood only from 14 km slant range. The minimal engagement range of the system is 8 km. Therefore, the F-117 had to fly within a roughly 5 or 6 km wide corridor for at least 90 seconds for the Neva missile battery to have any chance. If it had flown only 3 km farther or closer, or even 10 degrees at a different heading, then it would have been either outside the detection range of the fire control radar or within the minimum engagement zone before the hit. The very short detection range of the fire control radar was the bottleneck. It did not matter at what distance the P-18 radar detected the F-117 above 25-30 kilometers. 
This detection range provided the necessary time for the kill chain. If the Nighthawk had only flown a few kilometers away, then the missile battery would have just watched hopelessly on the P-18 radar screen as the target receded. Even if the P-18 had detected the stealth plane from 100 kilometers. There was no standoff jamming. If the P-18 had been jammed by an EA-6B Prowler, it have been impossible to shoot down the Nighthawk. The very limited search capability of the SNR-125 was simply insufficient for scanning a larger airspace. See the video about the system. By the way, this also disproves the common myth that the F-117 was totally safe without the cover of standoff jamming planes. It was just a matter of luck that the 1F-17 was not escorted by F-16 with AGM-88 HAR missiles. It has to be noted that in most cases Danny allowed only very short use of the fire control radar. Transmissions longer than 21 seconds were allowed on very rare occasions to make the use of anti-radiation missiles more difficult. If the fire control radar was used for any period, the battery immediately initiated relocation even if they did not launch a single missile. During Operation Allied Force, 23 harm missile wrecks were found near the missile battery. This provides quite a good picture of how dangerous it was to turn on the fire control radar and why it had to be restricted for very short periods. Only by chance could an incoming harm missile be detected with the fire control radar, which could be launched even from the back of the battery. However, the P-18 could detect a harm at short distances unless it was obscured by strong electronic jamming. If jamming was not strong enough or was not at all, it was possible to turn off the fire control radar in time and turn on the harm decoys. The P-18 was immune to harms because of its meter wavelength. The diameter of the harm missile determines the passive seeker of the missile. The diameter has a direct connection with the maximum wavelength that the missile can track. In conclusion, one of the most effective units of the Serbian air defense achieved success through hard work and luck, but it did not have any effect outcome of the operation. One of the most interesting aspects of the incident is that the radar cross section of the F-117 can be calculated, at least regarding one direction. Because the parameters of the fire control radar are known as well as the first detection range, with the radar acquisition the radar cross section can be determined. This is the only authentic and publicly known measured radar cross-section value of any stealth airplane. Using the radar equation, which was presented in the previous video, the calculation is the following. The fire control radar of the NEVA uses a 1.5 by 1.5 degree wide wheel pencil beam. The peak ampere's power is 117 kW. The receiver sensitivity is minus 93 dB and the operational frequency is 9.5 GHz. The slant range was 14 km at 6 km altitude, which means a 12 km projected distance on land. Following the rearrangement of the equation, the result is minus 29.1 dB, which is 0.0012 square meters. The result confirms the rumors about the radar cross section of the 117. Before the case, many sources claimed radar cross section values between 0.0025 and 0.001 square meters. It has to be noted, this is true only a very narrow aspect region. At the moment of the detection, the radar bearing from the point of view of the Nighthawk was 80 degrees from the right. This indicates a very well optimized airframe for low radar cross section. This is just opposite with the most common and wide belief, which takes for granted that stealth can't be achieved in a wide azimuth region. Until recently, it was not well known that the another Neva missile battery, also defending Belgrade, scored a hit against a 117 that took off from Germany. Because of the near explosion, the plane essentially lost one of its stabilizers and suffered engine flame out. Regardless of the damage, with only one operational engine, the pilot was still able to return to base. Thus, following the conflict, the pilot was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross, which was given by the President of the United States in recognition of his extraordinary performance. Following the incident, then so-called expert journalists, as well as average people, put forward many wrong theories. Let's clarify the obvious first. 
There is no such thing as an invisible plane, just an unsinkable ship does not exist. The question is always the probability of an event occurring and under what circumstances. There is not such thing as an invisible airplane for radars, only the tabloid and silly propaganda announce such things. I hope this is clear by now. The stealth design does not make an aircraft invisible. It only makes it more difficult for the radars to detect and track. As the detection distance decreases, the time available for completing the kill chain also decreases. The question is the extent of the benefit that stealth capability can provide against a given radar and sense system in combination with other measures. The F-117 also had its own strong limitations. The plane didn't have any kind of cell defense system, not even a radar warning receiver. In fact, it had no radio connection when it flew near or in enemy airspace. To achieve the minimum radar cross-section, every antenna on the plane had to be retracted. During the design of the aircraft, achieving a low radar cross-section was not possible using any other way. The technology and the knowledge had not been available to create such a stealth plane as it possible today. If a missile was launched against the F-117, the pilot could only detect it visually, while the view from the cockpit was poor. However, due to the aircraft's limited maneuverability, it was not possible to outmaneuver it even if the pilot looked at the right place at the right moment. The F-170 is only capable of a maximum 4G overload maneuver near its top speed. With this, there is a still a slim chance of avoiding the V-759 type missile of the F-75 M Valhav system. However, against the NEVA's most advanced missile, which could turn with about 15G at 17 km altitude, the Nighthawk is hopeless. This is why neither the F-22 or nor the S-35 or any steel fighter rely solely on stealth. The maneuverability of the F-117 cannot be compared with the 5th generation stealth fighters. Just a very short but important note when anybody compares the mentioned G values. For defeating a missile, the target has to perform a turn in the right moment with far smaller G overload than the missile. The performance of the missiles and airplanes will be addressed in another video. In 1991, during Operation Desert Storm, Iraq possessed the export variant of the Volkhov and the Neva. These were the S-75M Volga and the S-125M Petura. However, the Iraqi air defense could not down a single F-117 while they flew 1,271 sorties. What could be the reason for this? The Petras did not have the P-18 radar, only the Volgas. The skills of the crew is also a significant factor. According to the damned F-117 pilot, who flew in both conflicts, this was one of the most significant differences between the Iraqi and Serbian crew with engineering-like qualifications. Anyway, it is interesting that the specific loss of the Nighthawk during its career was worse compared to several known stealth planes, which also participated in Operation Desert Storm. From about 1300 sorties, one was lost and another of us was severely damaged. Several conventional planes had better statistics. These fluctuations could be happen because different sorties has different risks. It simply cannot be determined how many times a certain plane flew into an engagement zone of different air defense systems. Even with a smaller sortie count, there is a chance that the F-170s flew many times more into heavily defended airspace than the other planes did. For example, on the first night of Desert Storm, a 1F-17 destroyed the command post of the Kari Integrated Air Defense System in the center of Baghdad. Why no other airplanes flew into the airspace of Baghdad the first night in the first wave? Some informed people claim silly things after the incident, such as stealth does not work against some old radars. In the first place, it is quite a funny approach when anybody characterizes a radar based on its age and not its biotechnical parameters. According to these people, stealth planes would be extinct soon because they were worthless and they could be only practice targets even for old systems. Such silly claims can easily be debunked. Was the stilt outdated and useless just because the Neva downed a singular F-117? Using this funny approach, the F-4 Phantom became outdated when it was downed a Divina Sam in 1965. 
Did the F-15E became outdated in 1991 when it was down by a Stone Age SA-2E variant during Desert Storm? Of course, it did not. By the way, if the Nighthawk was such an easy target, then why were more not shot down during the Allied Force and during the Desert Storm? Contrary to the prediction of ignorant people, the US and many wealthy middle power countries in long term are considering acquiring only stair planes or developing one. Countries like South Korea, Japan or European NATO countries. Most recently, Switzerland and Finland chose the F-35A over European-made non stud fighter jet, but after some political wrangling, Germany also decided to acquire the F-35. Even today, 10 countries use different versions of the Joint Strike Fighter. It can be stated that if a country in the near future acquires a different fighter, it will be due to political reasons or because the S-35 is not available to them. Currently the F-35 family is the only available stealth fighter for export as a finished product. Stealth as a concept is used for even cruise missiles. According to some people, the F-117 was a failure and this was the reason for retiring the plane. When the Nighthawk retired, most accurately they were put into long-term storage, it was carried out considering the F-35A. It was expected that the S-35A would be in service within only some years. It made no sense spending a lot of money on the F-117 fleet, while the far more capable new multi-role stealth fighter was just on the horizon. Another factor is that the S-300P SAM family had already been exported. Against that, the F-117 was insufficient. This will become clear following the presentation of the S-300 family. The only problem was that the S-35A was delayed almost a half decade and reached initial operation capability only in 2017. The F-117 was such a failed plane that it remained service for roughly 9 years after its first and only combat loss. If the Nighthawk had failed, it would make no sense spending money on it for another 9 years. Some experts stated such silly things like Neva and Volhov system would slaughter any stealth aircraft in a following conflict. Yeah, we could see that during Desert Storm and the Light Force. Oh, wait, no, that did not happen. Compared to the F-117, the F-35 has improved engagement range thanks to the GPS-guided glide bombs over the laser-guided ones. The F-35 does not have to fly so close to the target as the Nighthawk did. The older stealth plane was deaf and blind compared to the F-35, which has a radar warning receiver, data link and a distributed aperture system, which is primarily a missile approach warning system. Using data link and the DAS, it is possible to measure the distance and velocity of a missile. The stealth fighter have far better maneuvering capability compared to the Nighthawk, it could easily dodge the missile of the NEVA or an older SAM system. It is insane that following the F-117 shutdown, some people extrapolated into infinity from a single and very lucky case and could believe such silly things that against plays like the F-35, the old SAMs are magic weapon with silver bullets. Because of the limited space at the nose section, only centimeter wavelength radars can be used on any fighter to form a narrow enough beam. The largest possible antenna on a fighter can be roughly 1 meter in diameter, while the Nebo M has a tennis court size antenna. This is the price of using longer wavelength. Achieving comparable detection range with any fighter based radar to ground based meter wavelength radar is impossible because of the higher propagation loss. Zoltan Denny's unit, besides the F-117, downed the only other manned plane during the conflict, an F-16CJ fighter. The unit also claimed a hit on a B-2 intercontinental stealth bomber, but that was never verified. This claim seems impossible because the B-2 flew its mission at 14 km altitude or even higher. If it only had an F-117-like radar cross-section, which as we can know, it is half of the radar cross-section of the Nighthawk, it would be practically impossible for the fire control radar to detect the steel bomber. The P-18 might have been able to detect the B-2, but the fire control radar of the Neva had no chance to do that. In fact, the B-2 presented a capability first, which is mostly credited to the Nighthawk. The spirit bomber flew without a standoff jamming escort and the enemy air defense did not have any chance to shoot it down in a given theater. The B-2 and its capabilities is a topic for another time.
If you like the video, you can share, like, subscribe or ring the bell and follow the channel. You can support it via Patreon for exchange early access videos, voting on planned topics and extra content is available as well regular updates about the projects.